Today I want to talk about four steps to take to begin your minimalist lifestyle. Number one, keep the things that help you live the life that you want to live. So if you want to live a minimalist lifestyle, that means you need to get rid of stuff. So you need to keep only the things that assist you. We have all sorts of reasons for holding on to the things in our home. We justify it by saying, oh, it was a gift. I need to own it because of my profession. I feel guilty getting rid of it. It belonged to a beloved family member. Betty wanted me to have it. I paid good money for this. I can't just give it away. I might need it someday. But none of those reasons have anything to do with how you want to live your life. Spend some time thinking about where your life is headed. What does a minimalist lifestyle look like for you? If you think ahead five years, how do you want your life to look? How do you want your home to look? How do you want to be spending your time? And if there's anything in your home that's preventing you from moving forward in the direction that you want to go, then it's time to let those go. Number two, don't try to organize anything until you've gotten rid of most of it. The reason we have clutter on every surface because we don't have room to put it away. If you bring something into the house, you think, okay, where am I going to put this? And if we don't have a place to put it, we just set it on the nearest surface and we tell ourselves, it's okay, I'll figure out what to do with it later. You can't organize your way out of a clutter problem. If there is clutter in your home, then you have to get rid of the clutter before your home stays tidy. And when I talk about decluttering, I mean get it out of your possession completely. No storage unit, no basement, no attic, no garage, just completely out of your life. As Joshua Becker says, de-own it. You want the freedom that comes with minimalism? You have to be drastic with this. We can't save things just in case because those just in case things pile up and make our home feel cluttered. Think about it. We don't need a magic hanger in our closet that helps us hang 10 shirts on one hanger. Instead, get rid of those clothes that don't help you. The skinny clothes, the fat clothes, the I bought this on sale, but I'm never going to wear it clothes. We all have the ones that make us feel frumpy or snobbish or just aren't the right color. It's not like we're going to change our mind in a couple years. If it makes us feel frumpy now, it's not going to all of a sudden be classy in three years. It's still going to make us feel frumpy. Eliminating all the clothes that make us feel like less of a person, you know, because I spent money on it, or I need to lose weight, or I should work out more. Getting rid of those things also gets rid of all those negative feelings that we have when we see it. You're not just unburdening your home and lightening your closet. You're unburdening your mind and emotions as well. Number three, when the clutter is gone, it's easy to organize. Of course, this depends on your space, but do we need 20 different pots and pans, or can we make do with just three or four? Do you need three sets of mixing bowls? Or is one set going to be plenty for the amount of cooking that you do? Do we need an espresso machine, a Keurig, a French press, and a drip coffee pot? Or can you make do just with the one that you use most frequently? And get rid of all those coffee cups that you don't like. And then of course that shelf with the coffee cups is easy to organize because you only need enough room for six cups. Yes, you can buy cute baskets and you can label them, but after you get rid of the non-essentials in your house, you might find that you don't actually need a lot of organizational supplies. Number four, develop a cleaning habit. I know I talk about this all the time, but you can become uber minimalist and get down to only a hundred items in your house. But if you don't have any cleaning habits in place, those hundred items will still be sitting on the counter and the floor and out all over the place, and it will still make your home feel messy. Start small, do the dishes twice a day, Clean your house once a week. Don't require a laundry list of things. Just require the basics of yourself. If you only require yourself to spend 10 minutes tidying the house in the morning and then the evening, that's not going to seem so overwhelming and it's going to make a big difference in your home. You might not be able to get all the baseboards and the light fixtures and doorknobs clean on your once a week cleaning. But if you do the basic vacuuming, dusting, clearing surfaces, and just tidying up, it's going to make your home feel fresh and you're going to feel in control of it. When you have those habits in place, then you can really feel the benefit of not having very much stuff. Because when you have very little in your home, cleaning it 
is a breeze. If you want to check out more about our minimalist life, you can check out our vlog videos right here. And if you want more decluttering and minimalist tips, go ahead and subscribe right here so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching.